Hey guys, today we have a really cool airplane. This is the Model C by Clipson. It's a bush plane. Uh, this is printed out of lightweight PLA and uh, it comes in at 650 grams ready to fly and it only takes 48 hours to print. Uh, that's continuous printing. So I'll take you back to the workbench and I'll show you guys how to put this together. We'll have a little bit of flight video at the end. Check this out. I used ColorFab lightweight PLA to print this airplane out. This material is really nice to work with. It's very lightweight and it works really well with these Eclipse and planes. Uh, like I said, it took 48 hours of continuous printing uh, to print this model out. Alright, so the first thing you need to do to get your 3D printed airplane started is get everything on the printer and get all the parts printed out. This airplane prints out pretty fast. I have the last uh, tire sitting right here and I have the last parts of the landing gear printing right here. So while this stuff finishes up, let's head over to the build table and we'll start assembling this plane. All right, so the first thing we're gonna work on is uh, the fuselage. So we're gonna start cleaning up all these parts with an X-Acto blade and uh, we'll get them all cleaned up and we'll start gluing them together. I'll be using Zappagap medium CA glue to assemble this airplane and I have Zip Kicker CA Accelerator to spray on the parts to accelerate the cure time for the CA glue. When you spray that stuff on there, it basically cures the glue immediately. Uh, I don't like to use it very often uh, because it turns the glue a little bit yellow and it bubbles it up a little bit. For the lightweight PLA version, we're going to add some carbon rods to the tail here. So we just use one millimeter rods, glue them in place in the fuselage, and we'll just slide the rest of the parts onto these carbon rods and glue them in place. So when I insert these carbon rods, I leave them long and then I just cut them off once I uh, have the rest of this glued together. So the bottom one I'll just cut at 40 millimeters and the top one I'll cut at 11 millimeters. And then we had to add these little guide pieces in uh, for this last part of the fuselage. Uh, just help guide the tail part on there and add a little bit of strength. So just add two of those on there and then uh, just glue that tail portion in place. Okay, now we're going to assemble the rudder. So to do that, we're just going to take this uh, steel wire, bend a 90 degree angle on it to fit into the rudder there. And then we're gonna use, this is the axis with hole uh, in your STL file. So we're just gonna print a bunch of those out because those are what all the control surfaces uh, hinge off of. So we're gonna glue the steel wire in place and then we're gonna glue this into the bottom of the rudder and then make sure that dries. And then uh, we'll put the axis in the top also and this is just a PLA fitting for the tail of the fuselage, so we're just going to use this short little wire there just to use as a guide tool to get that thing glued in place, and then we'll just pull that wire right out, let it, let it dry, and then we can uh, insert our assembled rudder piece with the wire installed. And I also have a Z-bend for the push rod that I put in place there at the same time also. So now we can bend this tail wire for the tail wheel. And this is the push rod wire that I hooked up to the rudder and I'm just going to cut that off to length uh, just past the servo mount there to leave myself a little extra room there. Uh, we'll deal with that once we hook up the servos. Uh, so now we'll set the vertical stabilizer so we'll just glue this uh, hinge point on the top of the vertical stabilizer. We'll glue this in place and then because we already have that axis pin in the rudder we'll just slip that right over top of that axis pin and then the rudder's locked in place and then we'll just glue the top of the rudder in place. Now I'll move on to the wing. So the wing's pretty easy to assemble. Uh, the first part we need to do is just glue these little guide pieces on the right side of the center section of the wing. Uh, just the way that the print prints on the bed there you can't really print the tabs on that side so we'll just add those guide pieces in place and I start with this piece uh, just because it is the most difficult to get lined up 
And then once you have that lined up, the other pieces are all have those guides all uh, already printed on there. So we'll just add glue to all those pieces and glue them all together. I like the hinge system on this airplane. It's really nice and clean. Uh, just make sure that these axis pins fit inside these hinges and they spin nice and freely because once you set all this up, it's hard to you know clean them up and get them to work better uh, once you have it assembled. So make sure you get those cleaned up. Make sure those axis pins spin very easily inside of there uh, before you glue all this together. So I don't use any glue on the axis pin or anything like that. I just glue them uh, glue the control surfaces together and just kind of sandwich the pieces uh, together, those hinges in place. Uh, and then we will make sure this axis pin fits in there and we'll insert this into the center section of the wing. And then once we have that set up, we can glue this to the actual wing. So we're just going to add a little bit of glue to the actual wing here. And don't use too much here because if it's too much and it gets on contact with the control surfaces, you'll glue it in place. So. Just use a little bit of glue and then glue that together and then we'll leave the wing section three off until we get these all fitted in there because uh, if you put the wing section three on there first then you won't be able to get the hinge system locked in so now that we'll do wing section three so we'll make sure that axis pin fits in there nicely and they'll add the glue to the uh, wing and put it together this airplane has changeable wing tips so there's kind of more of a traditional like wing tip and then there's the winglet actually that lessens the drag it'll have a little bit better performance uh, to it so we can glue those together and then uh, we're going to mask all this off and add some paint to it so we'll paint the window black and then we'll paint the rest of the airplane a solid red and then we'll come back over with some grays to make some accent pieces on it Okay, well now we got this airplane all painted up, we're ready to finish assembling this. So we're going to start out by adding the landing gear. Uh, these uh, tires I'm going to use are actually pretty cool. They're printed out with Verishu TPU by Colorfab. Uh, this is awesome because it's not only lightweight, but it also is very squishy. So I actually printed off a TPU tire also just to compare it, just to see what the weight difference was. This is 12 grams and this is 26 grams for the regular TPU with the same settings. Uh, this is just printed at like 50% flow rates and uh, this is way, I mean it's squishy but it's it's very stiff so this is way more soft so it'll be awesome for the landings so we're going to try that out. So let's add some electronics, get the gear on this thing and we'll get it out for a flight. Landing gear for this airplane are a nice simple design, just using two millimeter wire. So we'll bend a 90 degree at one side and then we'll have to put this little collar on there first. That's That joins the two uh, pieces together, the front and the rear section. So make sure you put that on there before you bend the bottom part for the actual wheel to slide onto. And then we'll fit the tail portion. We'll just cut them to length using the PDF file that Eclipson has. And make sure that these fit first. I'm just going to kind of test fit them in place, make sure that the lengths line up right. And then once it looks good and it, it all fits together, we'll glue it together. So I'm just going to add a little glue to this 90 degree, set that in place. Uh, and then make sure that it dries before you put that back in the fuselage so it doesn't glue itself into the fuselage. 
Once we have those fittings glued on, we'll glue the bottom of the rod into this connector to connect the two pieces together, slide them into the fuselage. And then once we get that lined up right, we'll put in our little dab of glue right there on that connector just to keep those wires from sliding. And we'll add the screws to the fuselage. For the tail wheel, I'm just going to slide that in place. I left this a little long there, and then I'm just going to bend it just a little bend there, and then we'll cut it off, and I'll just keep that tail wheel from sliding off. I left the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator off so that way I could leave it off and keep it white without having to mask it off. So now we'll just go ahead and add this uh, horizontal stabilizer in place, and we'll set up the elevator. I'm going to do the same thing with the elevator that I did with the rudders. I'll just use a Z-bend and then just stick this wire into the fuselage. And then I'll have an adjustment collar on the actual servo. And so we'll set that up in a minute. So we'll do the same thing we did with the flap rounds. We'll set that pin in place. Don't glue it in place or anything. That way you have less chance of gluing that hinge in place or getting it stiff with glue. So just pin that between the two halves of the elevator and then we'll just glue that to the horizontal. And then uh, as you're you know, putting that on there, make sure you hit that Z-bend on there uh, with that push rod. And then we'll glue the elevator tips on there. And we're ready to start setting up the servos. For the servos, we're going to use 9-gram servos. We'll attach them to the fuselage brackets. And then we're just going to, once I have the bracket assembled there, it's easy just to add glue and then insert the uh, servo in place. It's a little easier to do it this way than to glue the bracket in place and then screw the servo in place. It's just a little less stress on the fuselage and everything else when you're screwing that together. Now for the adjustment collar, you just got to drill that out just a little bit to fit it on that control horn. And then we're going to add a little bit of CA glue and spray that with CA accelerator on the nut there just to prevent that nut from coming off on the control horn. And then we'll set the servos up. We're gonna hook them up to the receiver and make sure the servos are centered. And then you wanna just make sure they're centered before you put these control horns on. So that way uh, they're lined up properly. And then once we have the control horns on, we'll just add the screw to the servo and then we'll tighten up this set screw for the adjustment collar and we'll cut these push rods to length. Okay, now we'll start setting up the motor and the prop. Uh, so I'll set uh, set up links in the description below for all the electronics and parts that I use for this airplane to make it a little easier for you guys to order up all these parts. Uh, so we'll set up this uh, motor and then we'll attach the motor mount to the uh, motor. What to get some extra screws for these because the screws that this motor comes with, they don't actually work to attach the motor mount. Um, and then we'll go ahead and add these screws to the fuselage to um, secure the motor mount in place. And then we'll attach the propeller. One of my favorite features of this plane are these exhaust pipes on the side. So if you guys don't want to add these exhaust pipes, you can definitely leave them off. Uh, it'll have a little bit better performance, but for aesthetic, I'm going to put them on. Uh, and then we'll set up the battery cover. So we'll use a little magnet for the battery cover. So we'll just glue those in place and then wait for the glue to dry. And we'll insert the cover in, in place. And then we'll set up the servos and the wings. So we'll take these wing tips off. I just put them on there just to check them out for now, but I'll show you guys how to set those up in a second here. 
uh, and then we'll go ahead and set the servos up. So again, I'm gonna use nine gram servos for those and we'll attach them to the servo brackets for the wings. And we'll do it about like the way we did it with the fuselage. We'll set them up with a receiver so that way you can center the servos and then get the control horns uh, lined up. And then once you have the control horns lined up, we'll add the screw like that to the control horn to keep it in place. And then we're gonna add tape to the flap around there to keep that locked in place. And then we'll put a Z-Bend on there. And then I'm gonna use a Sharpie and mark it. And I'm actually gonna just use Z-Bend on both sides of this wire, uh, just to make it a little bit less you know, linkage and stuff for a adjustment rod. Cause you're actually hooking these up to separate channels in the receiver. So that way you can actually individually trim the right and the left side. Okay, so these are the two different options for the wingtip. So there's the traditional kind of style wingtip and then there's the winglet. So we're gonna insert these pins in place and so we'll just glue them to the actual wingtip. Uh, and then we're gonna add magnets to them. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie and put a, a mark on one side of the magnet so that way I can, I'll keep that black line facing towards the uh, wingtip on all of them. So that way they're all the orientation of the magnets are the same. And then make sure that the orientation for the magnet in the wing is the same also. Uh, so we'll again just use a sharpie, we'll mark that, and then we'll add a little glue to the wing and then we'll set that in place. For attaching the wing to the fuselage, there's two different options. One, you can use rubber bands, so you can use these little hooks and glue them and screw them to the side of the fuselage. Or two, you can use this system, which is a nice system that uses screws with a nut locked in between those two parts and then that screws the wing on the top and it's a little cleaner looking. So that's what I'm gonna use. And then uh, we'll set the ESC up. So I added a little bit of extension for the battery uh, to hook the battery up there. And then we're gonna put a little piece of Velcro on the bottom of the fuselage there for the battery. And I'm gonna use a thousand milliamp three cell battery. Uh, and this battery weighs 92 grams. So we'll put that in place and then we'll hook it up and test everything out. And you'll need a short extension to attach the wing to the receiver. And then the wing just sits into this notch on the back of the fuselage and then uses the screws to uh, secure the wing in place. Uh, or if you wanna use the rubber bands, you can definitely do that also. All right, this airplane is ready to fly. We'll check the CG and we'll throw this thing on the scale. Uh, it came in at a ready to fly weight at 650 grams and that's with a 92 gram battery in the nose. Uh, this airplane is definitely my favorite airplane by Eclipse and it just looks so awesome. Threw some decals on there. We're gonna take it out to the desert and uh, see how this thing flies. And this thing really flies well. Uh, it really works really good. Um, I'll have a maiden flight video up here in a couple of days so make sure to check that out. Uh, check out my YouTube channel for some other 3D printed airplanes. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thanks for all the support, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next build.